and welcome to my channel. I'm Hibber, a medical student at the University of Manchester, and this video is created for those who would like an insight into what it would be like to start medical school or start clinical placement during the unpredictable time that is the COVID-19 pandemic. If you're starting medical school this year, or like me, you've just started your clinical placements this year during the pandemic, I'm going to be talking about everything that has been different to normal and what sort of differences you can expect to face compared to past years. I'm going to be talking about several different things, so if there's something in specific you want to skip to, then you can use the timestamps in the description box to do that. Also, I just wanted to say before I begin that during the video, at no point am I complaining about any of the changes that have been made during the pandemic. The measures that I'm going to be talking about are things that have had to be done to keep medical students, doctors, patients and other healthcare professionals safe during the pandemic. None of us are alone in what's going on. These are challenges that everyone is facing and I think quite frankly it's quite privileged that these measures have been put in place to allow medical students to still train despite the pandemic and despite the current situation. So the first thing I would like to talk about is PPE. Whether you're just starting doing medicine in year one or if you're starting your clinical placement in year three, having just a simple conversation with a patient is now very different to how it was before the pandemic. And one of the reasons for that is PPE. PPE is personal protective equipment and the PPE that um, medical students and kind of the baseline PPE that everyone is required to use on the wards is um, gloves, a surgical face mask, a plastic apron and a face shield. This might not sound like a lot, but actually wearing this amount of equipment to me feels like it really distances you from the patient. It really takes away from the conversation and it really takes away from the personal aspect of talking to, getting to know um, and building a rapport with the patient. I'll try and insert a selfie here that I took whilst wearing PPE to show you what I mean, but in general I think it really takes away from the communication with your patient. The patient can't see your facial expressions, often they can't even hear you, especially people who are hard of hearing anyway. It's already so loud in a busy ward, let alone putting multiple layers on top of your face. It just becomes more difficult for you and the patient, both of you, to appreciate the communication. Also, you won't be able to appreciate this without having put these two things onto together yourself but putting a face mask and a shield on together creates the most humid environment ever. There are honestly times when I feel like I can't breathe with the face shield on and that is not even an exaggeration just, like just try to put both of them on together in an already boiling ward. The next thing I would like to talk about is something that's more relevant to people who are just starting out medical school but that is the grasping of concepts especially anatomy. There are some things that even if taught to the absolute greatest level online it cannot replace the teaching of that concept in person. I personally really struggled to picture anatomy in 3D when I was um, studying anatomy without having the chance to come in um, at the end of the week to come in and have a look at the prosections and the anatomy in person. Some students will be absolutely fine with it, but some students I think will struggle if they fail to visualize the anatomy that they're being taught online. For example, if you're trying to learn the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg, there's nothing you could do online that would replace actually having a look at those muscles in a prosection, in person, or even on a 3D anatomy model. And this is true for many parts of medicine, but I think it applies to anatomy in particular. The next thing I'd like to talk about is um, probably the most strangest thing that both medical students and doctors have had to deal with during the pandemic, and that is telephone clinics. If you're just starting medical school, you'll probably only be joining clinics, say once a month or once a semester, but um, if you're starting your clinical years, then it will probably be once a week. Normally, hospital clinics are held for patients who are not currently in hospital, but want to come in to see a specialist about their condition. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, almost all of these consultations have become telephone. Very few patients actually do still come in, but I've been doing my placements for about four months now, and I haven't seen a single patient come in for their clinic appointment. It makes it really difficult for you as a medical student to be able to appreciate the patient's condition and what the patient is going through and their disease without actually being able to see the physical signs of the patient. Normally in clinics before COVID-19 times you'd be able to examine the patient or listen to their heart for example but during telephone clinics all you kind of end up doing is just sitting there for hours and hours doing nothing but listening to the doctor. And don't get me wrong, telephone clinics can be really, really informative as well. 
Um, I've had some telephone clinics that I've really, really enjoyed and I've found very informative. And the doctors always do really try their best to give you the backstory of the patient and um, kind of talk to you about the condition and about the disease. But just in general, it is far from ideal, not just for us, but for the doctors as well. Often the doctors will try and put speakerphone on so you can hear what's going on on both sides. But it's um, really difficult to try and understand what's going on without the context of having the patient actually in front of you. Sometimes the doctors won't even be able to put speakerphone on and then you just end up listening to a one-sided conversation and trying to figure out what the patient might have said. The next thing I wanted to mention is the impact of social distance. Because of social distancing, less medical students can participate in an activity at time. For example, like in the clinics I was talking about, because you have to maintain a certain distance, now only one student would be allowed in a clinic whereas in past years it would be at least two. And the same goes for ward rounds, which is when a doctor takes their students to go around to see their patients with them. This is usually a really insightful experience, but it's now only limited to about one to two students at a time, whereas in past years it could even be up to six um, students going around with one doctor. The next thing is that it, there has been a drastic change in the carrying out and teaching of clinical skills. During the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been really difficult to get your skill requirements done. For example, if you're just starting medical school and you're in first year and you need to practice taking blood pressure or observations on a patient, or if you're moving into your clinical years like me and um, you need to take bloods or examine a patient, it has just been really difficult to find opportunities to do those things, mostly because uh, many of the patients are COVID positive and even though you can choose to go and practice your skills on these patients, it's recommended by staff that you don't, obviously for your safety and for the safety of um, those around you. Also, because the NHS has become so busy and overwhelmed, it's really, really difficult to now try and find a doctor or a nurse or any healthcare professional to come and guide you or supervise you or give you some assistance or even just watch you to give you feedback for your clinical skill. At the moment, we're having to do everything alone, um, practice all our clinical skills alone on patients without having that sort of supervision that we would normally have because the doctors and nurses and everyone else is busy working hard during the pandemic. The next thing I want to talk about is um, self-study at home. So during the pandemic, many libraries and other facilities where normally students would be able to go to study have been closed. For people like me who can't study at home and need to go to a library or a similar space to find the motivation to study and revise, it's been quite difficult. Studying for exams has been really difficult um, without being able to get out of a noisy home and go and find some peace and quiet in the library. If your accommodation is nice and quiet, then lucky you, but I feel like many students will um, struggle with this, like I am, if they require a nice, quiet place to study. The next thing is talking about self-isolation. Um, this isn't something that's very specific to medicine. Of course, it applies to any university course or even jobs and um, stuff like that. But basically, if you are notified by NHS Track and Trace to isolate, or if someone around you gets the virus, then you need to isolate and then um, you basically miss a lot. Medical schools have been really understanding of this and haven't been as strict as they are in previous years about getting things done. Because if you have to self-isolate, you have to take time off, you have no choice. But still, if there's this one fascinating surgery on that week or if um, a doctor is coming in um, for a one-time thing and showing this unique clinical skill, then you do miss out on things like that and you do miss out on experiences that you normally wouldn't have to because you would normally never need to self-isolate. So those are the biggest changes I'd say that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought on medical education. I do just want to say though that despite all of this, I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. Starting clinical placements or just medicine um, during the pandemic, it honestly couldn't get much worse for the NHS, but it's really so inspiring to see how hard the NHS is working and um, to be part of this collective effort to kind of cope with and combat the virus. Seeing everyone around me persevere and adapt to these difficult times, I've come to admire our healthcare staff um, even more than I did before. And as tough as it can get for medical students during this time, I'm so grateful that we're still being allowed to train, we're still being allowed to come in during this tough time where the doctors and nurses are facing so many challenges on a daily basis and they're still taking some time out to give time to medical students and teach them and try to um, just help them in their training really. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you did find it helpful, then do consider subscribing to my channel and please also do leave the video a like and I'll see you in the next one.